guys, thanks very much, and welcome inside Rexall Place as we get ready for the second of five meetings between the Oilers and the Coyotes. Let me the starting goaltenders brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official copy of the NHL. Ben Scrivens gets his 12th start of the season. All four of his wins this year have come here on Rexall Ice. And at the other end, 28-year-old Devin Dubnik faces his old team for the first time in the regular season. He stopped all 35 shots Friday in Vancouver for his third win of the year. He was here October 1st. He gave up three goals on 33 shots in a preseason loss to the Oilers, but this one counts in the standings. The, the start is going to be so important for both teams, but especially for the Oilers. They need to gain some momentum during a game and be able to keep it. Taylor Hall, Ryan Nugent Hopkins with Benoit Pouliot in the top line. So Taylor Hall does not start with his familiar mates just yet. The shot tipped by Pouliot in the high slot. Then Devin Dubnik makes the save. Let's take a look at the keys to the game. Brought to you by Ford, official automotive partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Well, I'm talking to Dallas Aikens today. He wants max effort, max speed, no matter how many minutes you're on the ice. 6, 12, 15, doesn't matter. Give him everything you got. And obviously with the Phoenix Coyotes, but darn it. He Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> we talked to you about it. We've talked about starts. You want to get after the Oilers early. Put them on their heels. Taylor Hall gets his first taste on Rexall ice since November 1st when he was hurt in that game against the Vancouver Canucks. He is with David Perron and Mark Arcabello. Mikel Botcher, the Oilers familiar with him. He had the hat trick, his first of his career in that game October 15th in Arizona. A 7-4 loss by the Oilers. Ference goes right up the middle, picked up by Arcabello. Arcabello to Hall. Taylor Hall with his first touch. Hall, toe drag, shot went off McCulloch. Arcabello on the near side. Here is Arcabello to the middle, throws it towards the net. Dubnik makes the save. Baron looking for the rebound. They have to be keeping an eye on Taylor Hall. He will not be eased into the game. As he gets the puck down low, he's going to circle out high. Good job by Mark Arcabello just to find it and then throw puck toward the, the puck towards the net. What you want to do as much as you can, start early in the game, getting pucks to the net and then getting people there as well. Louis DeBrest talked about it last game against Ottawa. That's why the Senators were so successful. Ollie keeps it in. It's personal Dreisaitl and Yakupov on the ice now. And Sam Gagne wearing number nine with Shane Doan and Rob Klinkhammer. Sam Gagne with a couple of assists in that game against Vancouver put him over the 300 point mark for his career. He now has 301. It's interesting what Dave Tippett said. He compared some Sam Gagne's situation to his situation when he first was traded, was with an organization for a long time, went to a new team, and finally David Poyle, as general manager with the new team, took him aside and said, Dave, just play. Stop thinking, just go play. And he kind of thinks Sam Gagne is in the same situation where it's stop thinking, just go play. His 499th career NHL game here against the team he spent seven years with. Keith Olin, who has been a pleasant surprise for the Edmonton Oilers. Yakubov tips it up to center and there is Gagne. Sam Gagne. Pass intended for Shane Doan, too far for him. McKeaton gets it to Hendricks. Hendricks, Yohan Sue, and Gordon. Here comes Schultz. Gets spun around and knocked down by Michael Stone. Vitaly trying to get it out. And so they finally do work it out to center. Rambini kicked it, and it was picked off by Gordon. Schultz hammers it in. Round the board to goes. Hendricks waiting for it. He gets tied up with Brandon McMillan. Gordon with the puck now. A bouncing puck comes to Michael Stone, and Stone will ease that puck to Crombie, who works it out to center. Johansson circles away from Crombie. Crombie stayed with it, forced the turnover. Martin Hansel, that natural hat trick for the Phoenix Coyotes in that game against Vancouver, out there with Martin Iraq and a former Edmonton owner draft pick, Tobias Reeder. Now a race. Iraq gets cut off there by Jeff Petrie. That's what Jeff Petrie can do. He can get on his horse. Good speed there. Oh, yeah. Catch Iraq. Flicks it in, and he'll go after it along with Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Hopkins tied up there by Hansel, but Pouliot comes up with a puck to Everly. His shot's in that one. They have got a piece in the post. Pouliot in the corner. Gets knocked down. Nugent Hopkins plays it back to Petrie. Jeff Petrie throws it towards the net. Blocked by Hansel. 
kept in though. Here's Pouliot right out in front. Everly dropped it back and Iraq was the only guy there and he intercepted it. Ran out of room. Reader flips it in and he will go off on a change. Tobias Reader played in the World Junior Championships as well as the World Championships with Leon Dreisaitl. For all. Pass for Hall. Just out of his reach. Randall is there, but Perron brings it back in. Keith Yandel playing in his 403rd straight game. Murphy almost got caught. Perron. Perron cycles with Hall. Looking for Arcabello. It was tipped away before it could get there by Connor Murphy. Murphy, a first-round draft pick in 2011. He went 20th overall. Right side of the puck behind him. Intercepted by Dolan, but coming back is Teddy Purcell. Support by Purcell. He gets it to Yakubov. Yakubov right in front of his own net. But a head of steam and a nice little pass just out of the reach of Leon Dreisaitl. And with Gorman. Lost it. Trying to recover. And Purcell it gets it to Dome and Shane Dome. Connor Murphy off the board for Rob Klinkhammer. He will bang that in and it comes right to Ben Strivens. And with Gagne bearing down on him, decides to hang on to it. But one of the bright spots on defense has been Jeff Petrie, the stabilizer, as I'm starting to call him, because that's what Dallas Eakins refers to him as. Marty Erat's got a full head of steam. One, two steps, and Jeff Petrie's right back, cuts him off. And then right after that, about 30 seconds after that, defense spurs your offense. Nice try to get in front of the net, but Jordan Everly ran out of room. and knew he wasn't going to be able to get it past Devin Dubnik, tried to center it. But you get a little offensive near chance, because no shot went on net. But if it wasn't for Petrie making that play, the offensive chance doesn't happen. Boyd Gordon wins the draw. Boyd Gordon in the top 10 when it comes to faceoffs. He is currently ranked 8th in the league. In his last five games, he's been at 50% or better. That's a nice trust factor if you're a coach to throw out Boyd Gordon. One of the things that Jeff Petrie, though, and go back to Jeff, what he does so well is that he's able to use his stick so effectively. And now when you watch Boyd Gordon, watch how he uses his stick and his technique in the faceoff circle. It's quite interesting. And asking Boyd about... The technique, he goes, listen, i got to try to get in somehow because they're just dropping the puck and there's a lot of big guys that get over and are able to overpower me. How about Martin Hansel? Six foot six, 226 pounds, and there is Hansel at almost 60%. So it's going to be an interesting challenge for number 27 tonight. And, and Boyd's got a unique style when he takes faceoffs. He's up against Joe Vitale right now, gets down low and wins it. Right back to Andrew Ferentz, who plays it off the boards for Johansson. Yes, he owns who tips it in. Always drops to that knee and gets really strong low. Says he's going to keep doing it until they outlaw it. Here's <laughs> Petrie with a shot. Dubnik the save. Jeff Petrie got his first goal of the season and tied it up against Ottawa in that game on Thursday. Hendricks from the corner. Checked by Crombie. Fights him off. Petrie with it now. Petrie just flips it ahead as the owners want to get a change in. They have done all the shooting so far in this game. Five minutes into the period, five shots for the owners, none for Arizona. And this is the momentum that Matt Hendricks talked to me about today, about keep that momentum in shots. If that first goal goes in against you, so what? Keep doing what's getting you those shots and those chances. Bouliot lost it to Hansel. Erat keeps it in. Reader couldn't get to it ahead of the Heat, who got it to Fane. Fane do. Everly, but he was tied up by Ekman Larson. And Ekman Larson able to keep it in. Hansel with it now. Sharp angle shot. Scribbins the save. The puck loose. And it's picked up by Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins with a head of steam across the red line. Moving in with Pouliot. Pouliot shot, and he whistled that one wide. Fame could not get over in time to keep it in. Oh, out the middle for Pouliot. Pass intended for Everly is broken up by Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson and Yandel. Drew, I think it's going to be on the ice between the two of them almost the entire game. Yep. Lori Korpakoski with Vermette and Botker. Korpakoski, Vermette shot. That one doesn't get through. Schultz checks Botker, but Botker plays it back to Yandel. Steps into a shot, steered aside by Ken Scrivens. The rebound sits there. It's still loose. Pressure now by the Coyotes. Their first real sustained attack. Antoine Vermette. Lays it back to the point. Connor Murphy throws it towards the cage, and that gets deflected off the stick of Pouliot and up into the netting. Rogers Oilers Hockey here on Sportsnet.
Uh, welcome back, and a welcome back to Taylor Hall, who returns to the lineup. Uh, when he was injured, his mornings would generally start around 10 a.m. He would come to the rink, uh, rehab, as well as ride the bike. The more he started to skate, then the less bike riding he did. But when he wasn't at the rink and he went home, a couple of the things that he had to do, and you would imagine he had to do a lot of, a lot of movement with his knee just to loosen it up and for him to get comfortable. And then the other thing he did, bring the ice, hurry up, come on. He would have to elevate his leg and put the ice on there two to three times. And the other thing Drew and Kevin, and Kevin, my witness, was there. He said he liked watching the broadcast. So nice of Taylor to say that. Said he loved Drew, he loves Gene, me. <laughs> <laughs> he loves Gene. He loves Gene. Who doesn't? He's a big fan of Gene's humor. 13-27 left to go in the first period. The shot's starting to even up as Sam Gagne will take this draw along with Flamehammer and Doan against Nugent Hopkins. A scramble draw controlled by the owners and they start away. Hall. Eberle back to Hall. Hall with a wrist shot. Dubnik the save. Well, that didn't take too long no. to get the big three back together again. And then you, yeah, well, when you look at what Dallas Aikens was saying today, he did mention that this was going to be a very fluid situation. But I love Jeff Petrie up in that rush. Jeff Petrie just activates from the point. We'll give a go at the blue line. Jeff Petrie streaking down the middle, shot towards the net. That's a smart play by Taylor Hall. See the guy driving, get it towards the net, maybe he got a rebound. Dreisaitl, Purcell, and Yakupov out there now. And Yakupov stealing it away from Ekman Larson. Dominic McCall. Crombeen will backhand it. It hit Dreisaitl. And he'll play it back to Schultz. Justin Schultz trying to make a move around Joe Vitale. Gets stopped. Vitale brings it in. Fires a shot. Scrivens the save. Hangs on. No rebound for Crombeen. Together with honorary co-chairs Cheering for any team that can give him a big payday. This is the Sports Select Legends free agent. A real ruthless such and such. Get your game on with tools. Time to play Safeway's million dollar score and win. If any Oilers player scores five goals in tonight's game, Wilda Miller of Wetaskiwin, Alberta could win one million dollars. Shop at Safeway and you could be our next lucky winner right here on Sportsnet. Drew, here's the battle we talked about. Martin Hansel and Boyd Gordon. And Gordon wins that. Let's go down to the one knee either. He stayed really wide based, but he was able to get over the face-off circle right away, not, not allowing Hansel to get over top. Hendricks to Gordon. Gordon off the board for Yoensu. Yoensu moving in. Centering pass goes right through the paint, kept in by Henricks, looking for Gordon in the corner. Behind the net, here's Yoensu. Yoensu plays it out in front, Erat with the steal. Tobias Reeder will flip it in, chase it himself. He and Fain come together. Hansel in there as well, it is Reeder who comes away with the puck. Tobias Reeder turns and iron pinned against the boards by Fain. Hansel lost it to Nikitin. Erat comes back. It is tough sledding down there in the corners. That work in the corner and behind the net is what the Coyotes do every game day. They work on one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-one, three-on-three down low. Dave Tippett, 200 wins in the desert. Hall gets stopped at the blue line, and it's an offside call. Well, Dave Tippett is just an outstanding coach and when you look at Dave Tippett and what he does he gets the most out of every player and I remember talking to him in, when we got to the desert on this first trip and we were, you know do you do anything different and he said not really he said the message is kind of always the same go play go play hard go play the best of your ability and he has an accountability standard that he doesn't labor from he is 16 2 and 3 uh, the coach of the Coyotes against the Oilers Backhand by Everly, stopped by Dubnik. Gagne from the corner. Pouliot watching him. Pouliot back on that top line. Ference shoots it right back in. Dubnik lets it go. Keith Yandel waiting for it. Takes a hit from Pouliot as he gets it to his D partner, Connor Murphy. Round to the near side. Shane Doan flips that puck high. Too far for Rob Flinkhammer. And Petrie pushes it back to Scrivens, who hangs on. It's interesting on that play. Andrew Ference wanted to pinch down, and so what Shane Doan did, he took the puck instead of trying to battle up high, took it back lower into the zone, and all of a sudden defensemen go, you know, I don't really want to go that deep into the offensive zone. 
It provides you with all kinds of space and time. So bring the, pack, the puck back down low. Then turn, and you gain so much space because defenseman is kind of that electronic area, you know, like the dog gets shocked when he goes outside the yard. Same thing with defenseman. I don't want to go below the hash marks. The return of Taylor Hall, incidentally, meant some lineup changes for the orders. Euro Pakarinen has been sent down to the minors. As that puck goes up into the netting, he and Oscar Klefbaum have gone back to OKC. Now, the question was when Taylor Hall went out of the lineup, who was going to pick up the scoring slap? Who was going to be able to do the things that they needed to do? Well, the big boy stepped up. That line stepped up. Ryan Nugent Hopkins was absolutely the driving force behind the line. Jordan Everly is putting the goals in the net. And Ben Wapuya just fit in really nicely, especially on that road trip out east in his familiar territory. He was one of the driving forces why that line was so successful. Ferris with a shot to rebound. David Perron was looking for it. Dubnik went down, gets back up. Ferris has the puck. Ferris checked by Bacher. Andrew Ferentz down in the corner, still alive underneath him. Now it's kicked to the far side, and it's picked up by Ekman Larson. Quick outlet pass to Lloyd Korpakoski. Korpakoski moving in against Arcabello. Collision in behind the net. Both Barker and Korpakoski go down. The orders come out with Hall. He'll backhand it in. Look at Petrie. Jeff Petrie gets to the puck first. Petrie circles the net, turns and shoots. And Dubnik makes the save with Perron right in his face. Good job by Jeff Petrie, but earlier, a really good chance. Again, shooting the puck, driving the net, looking for something. The puck just squeaks out, but the Coyotes collapse to the front. Michael Bachner doing a good job. And Jeff Petrie, again, jumping up in the play. Smart thing, turn and fire. Not looking for that extra pass, looking for simplicity and a direct line to the net. Dreisaitl wins it right back to Ollie through traffic. And Devin Dubnik makes the save, and he'll hang on again. We'll get another face off. He's got a... Pee Wee coach Howie Hicks used to always say constant dropping wears the stone and that's what the Oilers are trying right now in this first period just keep peppering and putting the puck towards Devin Dubnik now you just got to get some people there. 11 shots Whoa. so far and uh no. only took a big run at Brandon McMillan and knocked him into the boards the play continues an offside call at the Coyote hey, Blue Line Rogers Oilers hockey from Rexall Place right here on the net Well, Sam Gagne will see familiar faces on the ice and in the stands. Uh, former members of the Oilers, like Gagne, always appreciate the time spent with the likes of uh, Joey Moss. And it isn't just a hockey friendship that takes place at the rink. They're outside the rink. There's Sam and Joey, as well as all the hours that were spent at uh, Rexall Place. And Sam said even in a bad day, Joey always had a smile on his face. And there's no one like Joey. Former players realize that even more once they're gone. Sam Gagne, 481 games played in an Oilers uniform. And 295 of his 301 points were scored here. Nugent Hopkins on the fly. Ryan Nugent Hopkins dishes to Pouliot. Pouliot trying to get that to settle down. And back the other way comes Erat. Erat avoids the hit from the Keaton. Fain gets there first. Hanzo on the intercept. Battles with Pouliot, Nugent Hopkins, quick pass to Everly, Everly. Moving in against Yandel. Goes wide on Yandel. Played it behind the net, Connor Murphy got there ahead of Taylor Hall, but Everly gets it back. Everly still has it. Jordan Everly takes a look. Down low was Arcabello, but he was cut off before he could get a shot. And Yandel lugs it out to center and backhands it in. Keith Yandel averaging 25 minutes and 28 seconds a game. Perron. One of the things that John Shannon and Billy Jaffe talked about in the studio was challenging Devin Dubnik more than the Vancouver Canucks did. You can see why it's hard to challenge him because Arizona collapses right to the net. You've got to get inside if you want to push Dubnik back. All moving in and offside is the call as Schultz was just ahead of the play. Protecting what matters most to you and your team. You are covered with the power of insight. The official construction insurance broker of the Edmonton Oilers. Game 100 for Dallas Aikens tonight. Asked if he was different. <laughs> well, not really. 
know, it, you learn as he talked about his learning curve, and you always have to keep learning. He also mentioned some of the guys that he as we look at the shot towards him, as, as some of the things that Dallas Aiken, some of the guys that he confides in around the league, always looking to get a little bit more absorption information. He says if you stop learning, you stop working. And you know, when you're in that situation, who else can you talk to about being a coach in the NHL but part of the fraternity of coaches? And that really helps. I think, I think people will be surprised at how coaches talk to each other throughout the year. Bocker dishes off for Gormley. Gormley did not get a good handle on it, just threw it towards the net. B3 intercepted it. Gordon around the board to go. Stone pitching to try and keep it in against Hendricks. Bodker chased back out into neutral ice. Just over eight minutes left to go in the first period. The Oilers out shooting the Coyotes 11 to 6. Vermet. Bodker, his shot goes wide. Thornley pitches in. And a penalty coming up. The first power play of this game will go to the Arizona Coyotes. It's going to be a high stick. It's going to be Boyd Gordon. He did it accidentally. Lori Korpakoski driving towards the net. Boyd Gordon's back on defense. Just right at the top of the frame, you see that Korpakoski's going to go in and then playing defensively. Boyd Gordon gets his stick up and bang. Strictly accidental, but after Kirk Cuskin got up, Boyd Gordon went over and gave him a little tap. Of course, Boyd Gordon and Laurie played together in the, des in the desert. First power play goes to the Coyotes, who were one for four when these teams met on October 15th. Ekman Larson shot goes high and wide. Gagne keeps it in on the far side, and a great play by Nugent Hopkins on the intercept. Dubnik races out and makes the play at a charging Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Erat brings it in. Nugent Hopkins hustling back. Gagne from the corner. Nikita Nikitin and Mark Fain are the defensive pair as Nugent Hopkins almost got the owner's second shorthanded goal of the season. Arizona, one for four in that game against Vancouver. They are ranked fifth best on the road. Erat bagging away at the side of the net. Hunzel in there as well. Ekman Larson can't keep it into the point. Hendricks in a race for it. Yandel. Edie Yandel had the angle on him. Ekman Larson will give it to Yandel. The owners, the fifth best penalty killers at home in the NHL. Yandel has knocked down by Puglia, who's out there with Nugent Hopkins. Petrie finishes it off, sends it the length of the ice. 44 seconds left to go with the penalty to Boyd Gordon. Keith Yandel, outlet pass intended for Vermette. Vermette's got it again. He's got Doan in front, but the puck went behind him. Stone will give it to Doan. Back to the point it comes, and it splits the demon. And the owners will change up their penalty killers. Hendricks and Arcabello out there now with Fane and Nikita. Brandon Gormley leads the rush for Arizona. To the middle for Vermette. Vermette shot, pad save. And a swing and a miss for Bodker. He got it, but put it over top of the net. Gormley walks in. He fires a shot. He scores. Brandon Gormley gets his first National Hockey League goal. A power play marker that makes it one to nothing for Arizona. Got to go all the way back to the start of this power play for the Arizona Coyotes. And this play by Devin Dubnik. Nice knockdown by Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Now he wants to track this down. Dubnik way out. Big slide. And that prevents Nugent Hopkins from having an empty netter. And then the goal. Big rebound. Can't clear as the puck goes behind the net. And Brandon Gormley's got all kinds of time to walk in. A little bit of a screen, maybe. I'm not sure. We look in front of the net. Maybe have a better look at it. But Brandon Gormley, head up all the way. No, that's just straight in. Perfect shot. And what a shot it was. But Ben's looking for it. Looks like he's got a pretty good angle there. Maybe a little bit overplayed to the short side. But that's just a heck of a shot by Brandon Gorman. His sixth game of the season. A first-round draft pick in 2010. He went 13th overall. He gets an unassisted power play goal for his first goal in the big. Now this is where Matt Hendricks was talking to me about momentum. The first goal goes in against you. 
you can't lose momentum. You've got to get it back as quickly as possible, but you do it by sticking to the game plan. Everly, drop pass for Nugent Hopkins. Checked by Joe Vitale. Vitale kicks it ahead, gave it away to Nugent Hopkins. Right back for Everly. Ekman Larson on him. Hall in the corner. Hall, Nugent Hopkins, Everly together for this shift. Everly with the puck now. To the middle for Nugent Hopkins. Knocked down by McCulloch. A bouncing puck. And it comes to Oliver Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson lost it to Hall. Joe Vitale swoops in and helps out. Gets possession. Gives it to McCulloch. Under five minutes to go with the first period. The eighth shot for the Arizona Coyotes. Gives them the lead. McCall again up the boards for Erat. That deflects right on to Ben Scrivens. Scrivens pushes it for Petrie. Petrie leaves it for the captain, Andrew Ferris. Yakubov on the fly. Neil Yakubov moving in with David Perron. Back to the point it comes. Ferris lets it go. Perron with a chance. He was stopped by Hansel. Erat picks it up. Reader chips it. He will chase it himself. Ferris gets there first, takes a hit from Tobias Reeder as the puck comes around to the near side of Jeff Petrie. Under pressure from Hansel, and Ben Scrivens is going to end things by covering it up. Brandon Gormley's first point in the National Hockey League is an unassisted power play goal. That's the difference right now. Well, have you ever dreamed of becoming a professional hockey player? Uh, I'm sure this little guy has. Boston Pete's and the Oilers are giving 60 lucky geeks a chance to win an official Oilers jersey, a VIP game day experience, and a one-day official contract with Edmonton. Visit any Boston Pizza restaurant and purchase a kid's meal for your chance to win this once-in-a-lifetime experience. Kanye. The draw comes back to Stone at the point. Down low for Shane Doan. Doan. On the board sits Hendricks, who picks it up and starts away. Hendricks, nice pass to Purcell. Teddy Purcell moving in with Schultz. Here is Schultz with a shot. Dubnik the save, and he'll hang on. Very nice. Out of your own zone, through the neutral zone. Good speed on the attack. McMillan puts in the hard hit. Got a great support up the ice again. Good chance on net, Devin Dubnik. Solid. Devin Dubnik talking to us today about Sean Burke, the goaltender coach for the Arizona Coyotes. And what he's done for him, he said, he's given me confidence. He said, you know, you just play the game that you've played for years, but Sean gives you confidence. All in circles the net, all in there as well. Perron, taken to the board by McCall. Hall comes up with it. Cycles down low for David Perron. Perron. Goes cross ice, picked up by Schultz. Schultz throws it towards the net, tipped in front by Arcabello. Great save by Dubnik. Burbank slides that puck out. Devin Dubnik's biggest save of this period. Mark Arcabello is still looking for his first goal goal. Moving in now against Connor Murphy. Arcabello trying to center it, hit the back of the net. Murphy picks it up. Murphy. He is checked by Perron. Pouliot in there to try and help out as well. Benoit Pouliot drives the net. Goes behind, takes a look. Nugent Hopkins tips it ahead, gets it himself. Everly on the ice now as well. Everly turns to get away from Vermette. Goes towards the net. Everly still has it. Everly with the shot through traffic. Picked up there by Mikkel Botker. And Botker starts away for Arizona. Gets to the red line and just dumps it in. It comes right to the scrimmage. Purcell sees it go by him, picked up by Martin Ira. Ira shoots it right back in. Scriven stops it up behind the net. Short little pass there to Nikitin. Nikitin to Everly. Everly for Dreisaitl. That eludes him. And Ira comes back to get it. Martin Ira played his junior hockey in red here. He'll start away, get checked there by his counterpart wearing number 10. And is brought back in offside. Talking to Devin Dubnik today, I said, what's the key to goaltending now that you're playing? He said, stay on your feet as much as possible. And there, he's got to stay on his feet, and then at the last second, go down, and then scramble. On his feet, on his feet, then he goes down at the very last second. He said, a lot of coaches will try to get you to move on your knees. He said, I think you have to stay on your feet, be patient. You saw a perfect illustration of that with that save. Yeah, Jonathan Quick's the only guy that is as quick on his feet as he is on his knees. 
and he's a real breed. That's exactly what, what Devin told us today. It's interesting how he said, you know, there's always exceptions to the rules. To, you want to be able to move on your pads, but there's some guys that just do it better than anybody else. But I, I think Devin's, uh, you know better than I do, but just what a breath of fresh air to talk to, even though he went through a tough thing last year, he seems like he's a confident young man today. And what province is he from? I don't know. Where's he from? Another one of the Saskatchewan kids. We're here to lead everybody out of the wilderness, I man. Guess That's so. what we do. That's the thing. <laughs> Less than two minutes to go. 14 shots for the Oilers. Eight for the Coyotes. All of Hit by McMillan, but the Oilers start away. Get to as far as the line, and Ekman Larson shot it right back in. Hall with it now. Hall works his way to the line, looks for Perron. Picked off there and brought back in by Gagne. Dobrikoski's shot gets deflected off the stick of Schultz and up into the netting. I think the Oilers are stuck with the, the game plan so far, even though they've given up another goal. That puts them on top of the National Hockey League and goals allowed in the first period. Not place you want to be. But overall for the Oilers, they had that goal go in, but they haven't really changed their game plan. They've actually played pretty strong, solid game. 14 shots so far this first period. Fourth line out there for the Oilers. One thing about playing the Coyotes is that you're going to have to be patient. They make you earn absolutely every chance you're going to get. They play hard. Their work ethic is really unparalleled. They get so much out of each individual player. You've got to stick with it. You've got to make sure you keep going, even though they, they don't give you a heck of a lot of easy shifts. 7-9-1 on the season are the Coyotes. They are 3-5-1 on the road. Dudnik makes a save. Less than a minute to go in the period. Petrie keeps it in for Perron. Looking for Hall, cut off by Murphy, but Perron on the intercept. Now he was checked and in turn, the Coyotes get possession with Buster. He'll backhand it in. Petrie rides back to pick it up. He'll give it to Ferentz. Ferentz looking for Pouliot on the outlet pass. Stone cut it off. It was picked up there by the goal scorer, Gorman. Anzo with it now. Anzo chips it in. Chasing it is Reeder. Nakita checked by both Iraq and Reeder. Anzo back to the point. Here is Stone with a shot. Then went off the stick of Pouliot. And out of play. I think when you are playing against the Coyotes, one thing you always have to worry about is their defense. Their defense comes up and jumps up in the play all the time, especially guys like Yandel and Oliver Ekman Larson. But they're a five-man unit when they come out. Good deflection, making sure you get your stick in the shooting lane, but it's interesting to watch Phoenix, how all five guys move up on that forecheck and keep the puck in the offensive zone. Time winding down in this first period. Pouliot keeps it in it at the blue line. Now it comes just outside. McKeaton back into his own zone. Quick glance at the clock. Fane has the last touch. But the only goal of this first period to David comes on the power play. The 14th power play goal for Arizona is first in the bigs for Gormley. Home at Rexall Place and uh, trailing by one through one third to play against the visiting Arizona Coyotes and as we work our way through this game prior to the game as I'm joined by Louis DeBrus We spoke to Jeff Petrie and he said uh, the more offensive he is the more it kind of helps his gap defensively He played more than any other Oiler in the first period of play. What do you think about his play? I think he's playing really well right now And I really like the tandem right now of him and Andrew Ferentz who came back from his suspension They've been really good together But for Petrie as you mentioned when he's jumping up in the play and here's the goal Thursday night versus Ottawa He crushes this puck. It's a confidence booster for Jeff Petrie when things start to happen for him. He's one one of the best skaters on the team, maybe the best skater defensively. Here's a good example of that. Could have been a 2 on 0 He recovers and he breaks it up. He gets down low here, gets a shot through to the traffic. When he's up in the play, like you said, on his toes, skating like this and creating offensive chances, 
It bodes well for him defensively. You know why, Gene? Because he's in the play. He's making things happen, and he feels much more comfortable. Very good start for him in the first period. All right, Brandon Gormley will uh, remember his first ever NHL goal because, well, it was unassisted, which is a bit yeah. different, and it came on the power play, but yet you feel like the Oilers' penalty kill has been good. Why is that? It's been really strong. When you look over the last 10 games, what they've been doing well is being a little more aggressive, and Keith Atkins worked really diligently with the penalty kill here in Edmonton to make them more aggressive. You see that pressure right there? Good stick in the middle. Almost leads to a breakaway for Nugent Hopkins if it wasn't for a very spectacular play by Dubnik. Here's another example. Get on the puck carrier. Make him do things he doesn't want to do a little faster than he wants to do it. Turn the puck over, put it down the ice 200 feet. So this is what's been happening with Edmonton. Good positioning, good sticks. It's led to some real good you know, chances when you're shorthanded, which is always a bonus when you're doing that penalty killing. But you like to see that only twice in the last 10 games, including tonight, have they given up a power play goal against. Yeah, 14th rank uh, penalty kill unit is what the Edmonton Oilers have, and I'm sure Drew and Kevin, they hope they don't have too much more work to do tonight. You're right, guys. Thank you very much. The first period scoring summary brought to you by Warley Parsons Cord. Visit WarleyParsonsCord.com to find your place on our construction team. Oilers with 15 shots, but the big shot came on his first NHL goal. Brandon Gormley on the power play. And as we talked about, it was a heck of a shot. And if you're going to get a first NHL goal that way, that's when you're going to go, hey, you should have seen my first NHL goal in about five years. They'll be telling all, all the rookies that. And just the third power play goal that the Oilers have given up at home in 23 chances as the second period is underway. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Benoit Pouliot, and Jordan Everling will start this period. McCall throws it towards the front of it. There's an opportunity. And a shot deflected wide as Reader let it go. Reader, Hansel, and Ira start for the Coyotes, who are finishing up a Western Canadian road trip. They'll go home to play Washington on Tuesday. On the line the net, he collides with Ira. They both go down. And Nugent Hopkins gets to center and dumps the puck in. Everly going after it. Gets there ahead of McCollum. Gets knocked down. Gets back up again. The puck comes back to the point. Kept in by Ferris. Hall behind the net. Hall. Got an option with Arcabello. Mark Arcabello plays it back to the point. Petrie waiting for it. Fires a shot that that hit Reeder. Gets it again. This one off the stick of Vermette and up into the netting. And Reeder is hurting. Uh, now a look at our sportsnet.ca fantasy hockey pool. You have a chance to potentially win a million dollars. Play the new Sportsnet hockey fantasy pool for your chance to win one million dollars or a VIP trip for two to a 2015-16 regular season game. It's free and easy to play. Get started today at sportsnet.ca slash fantasy. David Perron behind the net. Perron comes from out. A uh, cage and got surrounded, and now a three-on-two going back the other way. Kopakoski with Bodker and Vermette. This is Vermette with a shot. It's blocked. Hall coming back. He'll give it to Perron. Perron takes a hit, can't get it out. Long shot by Connor. Great save by Ben Scrivens. Yandel with a puck now. He steps into a slap shot that goes wide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Harris off the stick of Kopakoski and out. A well-played three-on-two defensively by the Oilers, and they paired it. Louis DeBrusk was talking about Andrew Ferentz and Jeff Petrie worked very well. They were block that three on two attempt. It is Gagne, Stone, and McMillan up front now. With Purcell along with Yakupov and Dreisaitl. Dreisaitl to Yakupov. Just not the end of his stick. Dreisaitl on the near side. Back to the point it comes. Schultz behind the net for Teddy Purcell. Purcell works his way out in front. Yakupov got dumped by Stone, a penalty coming up. The owners will get their first power play. Scrivens goes to the bench. Six attackers on the ice now for Edmonton. Leon Dreisaitl, the hall, and it is touched. And the owners will get their first chance with a mind advantage as Michael Stone is headed to the box. And this is just trying to get to the front of the net. And going there hard. And Neil Yakupov can do this. Just goes to the net hard. Michael Stone takes him down. You tell by Michael Stone's reaction, he's not very happy with that. But Dallas Aikens talked about Neil Yakupov and his work ethic. <laughs> I'm watching guys in the penalty box. I never see one guy look up at the, the screen and go, yeah, I deserve that. <laughs> but Michael didn't like that, that call from the official. But going back to Yakupov, Dallas Aikens again praising him for his work ethic today. Schultz waits, cross ice pass for Hall, deflected by Ekman Larson up into the netting. 
The Oilers were 0 for 2 in the game in the desert October 15th. Win the face off. Instead of shooting here, trying to go cross ice, but perfect positioning. I think it was Oliver Ekman, Oliver Ekman Larson just getting his stick in the right position. Oilers win 1 for 4 in their last game, that 4 3 overtime loss to the Ottawa Senators. Leon Dreisaitl with the power play marker. Paul will give it to Nugent Hopkins. Boyd Gordon parks himself in front as Schultz moves to the middle. He'll dish off for Eberle. Jordan Eberle lost it but got it back to Schultz. Schultz with a wrist shot and that one deflected wide. Nugent Hopkins pinned by Hunzel against the boards. Fights him off. McCulloch lost it to Gordon. Eberle to Boyd Gordon. Gordon behind the net for Hall. Hall let it go. Nugent Hopkins works it back to the point. Schultz to the middle. Wrist shot through traffic and a glove save by Devin Dubnik. What I like about Justin Schultz is he just gets pucks to the net and I think the Oilers need to do more of this. Get the puck high in the power, on the power play, get to a shooting lane and get it to the front of the net. Boyd Gordon doing what Boyd Gordon's trying to do in front, trying to provide a screen. But look at how Devin Dubnik, again, stays on his feet. That big target that Billy Jaffe talked about stays on his feet. This goes down and follows the puck right into his glove. You've got to not only be in front, you've got to be in the goalie's eyes. Face-off win for Arcabello. Back to McKeaton. He'll give it to Yakubov. McKeaton. Perron. Perron. McKeaton. One-time shot. Big save. Yakubov with a chance. Went off Gormley and up high. It's Teddy. McKeaton. Can't give it in. Sorry, partner. Teddy Purcell standing beside Devin Dubnik. Not in front. Big shot. If you're in front, makes it really tough for Devin Dubnik to find it. 17 shots for the owners so far as Dreisaitl goes wide on Connor Murphy. Dreisaitl. Pass to Peral. Peral. His pass intended for Nikitin was tipped away by Antoine Vermette. Down to 38 seconds of power play time remaining. The Oilers with seven power play goals on the season. They are ranked 20th at home. Person Stop. Yakupov carries on. Dreisaitl with it now. Leon Dreisaitl will give it to Nail Yakupov. Yakupov under pressure from McMillan. Spins to get away from him. Goes down low for David Peral. Peral. Back up top, the Keaton hammers a shot off the stick of Brandon McMillan and wide. Eight seconds of power play time remaining for the Oilers. The Oilers want to get a change in Schultz. Pops over the boys. As the penalty comes to an end, and Michael Stone is out of the box. Two shots for the Oilers on that power play. Both teams now haven't had a power play. The Oilers 0 for 1. Bacher steps into a shot and that was blocked by Nikitin. The puck's still alive. Nikitin shaken up. And that is twice in this last sequence we have seen players hurt. Reader blocked the shot from Petrie that stung him and now Nikitin in some pain. Boy Gordon tips it ahead. Connor Murphy runs into Gordon. Bacher gets it to Doan. Shane Doan cross ice pass picked up by Sam Gagne. Gagne. Back up top it goes. Here's Murphy with a shot and a shoulder save by Ben Scrivens. Gordon ahead to Hendricks. Hendricks gets to the line, shoots it in. Dubnik stops it. He'll play it to Connor Murphy. He was checked. Opportunity for Ferentz with a shot. Dubnik sends that into the corner. Hendricks around the near side. Ferentz down low. Pass for Yolitsu gets by him, but the Oilers will have to regroup. Petrie hammers it in as the Oilers make a change. Yandel. Gave it across to Murphy, up the middle for Gagne. Gagne could pass to the face of the franchise, Shane Doan. 59 points scored in 65 career games against the Oilers coming into this one. Julian spins, gave it away to Hansel. Ferentz there to recover, but that could have been dangerous. Everly with an intercept. Julia to Everly. He gets surrounded. Back to the point it comes. Ferentz slap pass. Intended for Everly was checked there by Lori Korpakoski. Reader across the blue line. Tobias Reader. Weak shot towards goal. Scrivens comes out, makes the save, and covers and gets a whistle. Nikita Nikita paying the price right here as Bodger lets it go. Ow.
Tobias Reeder was on a one-game American Hockey League trip when he was called up to the NHL. Unfortunately, he didn't have a suit with him, so he borrowed one from Chris Wojcik, a public relations member of the Arizona Coyotes. So it was Chris's suit that he wore to his first NHL game, and what a game. Uh, not only did he live out a dream, but he also scored his uh, first NHL goal and afterwards was wearing uh, that outfit as well. Even though it wasn't his, it suits him just fine. He picked up his first career assist in that game against Vancouver on Friday. Schultz across the blue line. Schultz dishes off to Peral. Plays it behind the net. Schultz stays active. Gets it to Arcabello. Return feed. Ollie down low for Arcabello. Hops by him. Hall plays it back to Schultz at the point. Hall lets it go for Gordon. He's tied up there by Ekman Larson. Bodger comes back. Picks it up. Backtracked by Hall, but the puck comes to Antoine Vermette. Flips it in the corner, and then it goes right on to Scrivens, and he'll hang on. Climb higher than ever before with the new King of the Hill, the 2015 Ski-Doo Summit XT3 from Martin Motorsports. Safeway's featured participating product for tonight's hockey game is Imperial Margin. 13.23 to go here in the second period. 18.12, the shots favor the orders, but they trail on the first goal of his career for Brandon Gorman. Yowensu, rich shot, and that one missed on the blocker side. I keep trying to keep it in. Trombine had lost his stick, picks it back up again. The race, Henrik, fends off Connor Murphy. Yoensu behind the net, he'll give it to Mark Fain. Fain walks in, throws a wrist shot through traffic. Another chance, and that one slides with the boot. Luke Payne and gets by McKeaton. Chased back into his own zone when he's got Trombine all over him. Gordon slips down, gets the puck to Everly. Pulling out, spun around as the orders make a change. Back comes Sam Gagne. Gagne trying to get around Ferentz. Ferentz takes him into the boards. Everly picks it up. Everly up to Pouliot off his skate. He was checked. Not much room to get things going. Here is Gagne off the end of his stick. Scriven plays it to the corner. Uh, you're right. There isn't much room out there. There's actually not much room for either team. Both teams pursuing the puck very well. John and Billy talked about it in the studio, the fact that the Phoenix Coyotes don't let you open up very much. The, the Oilers are doing a pretty good job pursuing the puck as well. Got in by Pouliot. Dubnik leaves it there for Brandon Gordon. Gordon right in front of his own net. Delivers to Mikhail Bodger. Bodger flipping it in. Hansel giving chase. It comes right to Scrivens. And he will cover up. The Goals for Kids program is proudly sponsored by Synovus. For every Oilers goal this season, Synovus will donate $400 to Kidsport. To date, the Oilers have scored 43 goals for a total of $17,200. The Vancouver Canucks played the game against Arizona on Friday. They do not play again until they arrive here to take on the Oilers. They talked about having a good feeling at the time of they have between games the owners the same situation they want to feel good about themselves before the game on wednesday against another pacific division foe iraq from the corner throws it towards the net ekman larson keeps it in for hansel hansel checked by fame hansel works it out in front reader with a shot that doesn't get through it hit his teammate martin hansel and back comes teddy person Pass to Yakupov on the fly. Right out in front it comes. Purcell was looking for the rebound. Now it's starting to open up just a little bit. Reader. Centering pass. Here's Hansel with a shot. And that blocked by Fain. McCulloch keeps it in at the blue line. Behind the net for big Martin Hansel. Hansel. Nugent Hopkins without his stick. And the puck does get by Ekman Larson. And that will allow the Oilers to get a change in. Right up the middle, Lori Korpakoski with a backhand, stopped by Scriven, second chance as well, and Scriven denies him another opportunity. Well, this is Oliver Ekman-Larsen. This is what he does so well. Well, he does a lot of things really well, but 
Right away, gets his head up, snaps the puck straight up the middle. And a great opportunity for Rory Korpakoski coming in, getting not one opportunity, but two. I love the fact that Korpakoski stays with it. And tries to bank it again past Gribbins. Connor Murphy. For Blocker off the end of his stick, Schultz will pick it up, send it around the board, picked off by Korpakoski. Korpakoski is checked by Arcabello. Perron, out for Hall. Hall across the blue line, one-on-one -on -one against Yandel. Drop pass for Perron. Perron trying to get it back to him, it went off Yandel. Perron diving. Keep that puck alive. Hall works it back to Schultz at the point. Schultz moves to the middle, steps into a slap shot. And Devin Dubnik makes the save. Arcabello looks for a rebound. Hall and Yandel exchange words. Now Keith Yandel wasn't very happy. Taylor Hall going in that game a little shot. I think they're both going to get a penalty. Taylor Hall will probably get one for cross-checking, and Yandel maybe for slashing. As the play goes to the net, it's going to go back out to the point, and I like how everybody collapses towards that, not just the Coyotes, but the Oilers as well. A little extra shot right there by Hall, and then the retaliation. Good shot by Justin Schultz down low with people there and just as that play ends you see a little jab by Yandel not very happy Taylor Hall going to the net hard and referee says you know what? enough for both of you oh no I'm wrong just enough for one guy retaliate how often is that you see I thought I was so smart there initiation doesn't get called but retaliation does the owner's second power play Nugent Hopkins quick shot by Schultz and Duke took that one up high and he makes the save so Hall stays out there, and Yandel is in the box. It's a different goalie than you see now with Devin Dubik, isn't it? You saw more last year. I mean, just that confidence he talked about with Sean Burke, the patience that he has. And 56 saves in a row for Devin Dubik going back to the last game. Schultz, Hall, one-time shot, and that was blocked by McMillan. Came right to Schultz. He'll give it to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins trying to elude Joe Vitale. Nugent Hopkins. Vitale checks him. Nugent Hopkins battles back. Gets it to Hall. Hall, toe drag back to Nugent Hopkins. There's Vitale again. Nugent Hopkins back to the point this time. It's Schultz again moving to the middle. Schultz to Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins with a wrist shot. Everly on the far side. He moves to the middle. Everly. Hall lets it go. I don't think he got a lot of that. He might want to check his stick. I think he might have broken his stick on that shot. Kind of hurt it. Joe Vitale, he's just going to go out and he's just going to be, be persistent. There's a nice block by McMillan going out there. Then you're going to get back out in front. Vitale goes down. He's going to make sure he's in the shooting lane. Again, shooting lane. Blocked. You want to be a good penalty killer? You've got to make sure you get in shooting lanes. 115 left to go in this power play as Mark Arcabello. I'll go up there as they do a little repair along the near side boards. Schultz stays out there with Perron, Yakupov, and Teddy Purcell. Antoine Vermette, second best in the face-off circle, and this Coyotes team will line up against Arcabello, who is second best in the dot for the Oilers. From the face-off, Arcabello gets down low. You can't do that anymore, Mark Arcabello. Now, the linesman right away waved no, and the back referee Blew the plate dead right away, so we're going to have a little conference. So you can't do this. You cannot push that back with your glove. And and Mark Arcabello, without a doubt, pushed that puck back with his glove. That's not allowed. They're going to have a little conference and see if they can get the call right. He kept his hand on his stick, but pushed the puck back. And that's what he claims yes. happened. I did not take my hand off the stick. Now, Dave Tippett is arguing this point with the official. Official tried to explain it to him. Dave Tippett isn't buying the explanation. But Arcabello again lines up against Vermette. This time Vermette wins it. Back to Murphy. Murphy plays it around the board, but Perron is waiting for it there. David Perron against Lori Korpakoski. 
Back to the point it comes. Schultz has got it. Yakupov is ready. He lets it go. And another block this time by the rookie Brandon Gormley. The success of Dave Tippett teams. Schultz they, brings it in. Sorry, they sell out for him. Delivers to Peral. Peral lays it back to Purcell. Yakupov again ready to shoot, but this time it's Purcell who lets it go. A bouncing puck is picked up by Peral. Peral to Schultz. Schultz delivers to Peral. Peral with a wrist shot again blocked. Connor Murphy this time. Schultz with it again. Schultz, Yakupov doesn't shoot, hangs on. Yakupov down low it goes. Back to Purcell. To Yakupov. Drysaddle has it hop over his stick. Checked by Connor Murphy, gets rid of him. Drysaddle still has it. Leon Drysaddle sticks that leg out. Now he'll go cross side. Peral waits, waits, and he is checked before he can get going, but gets the puck back again. Drysaddle, he was ready, but that puck hopped over his stick. Now the penalty is over. Schultz. Quick shot by Purcell. Again a block. Another one turned in by Connor Murphy. I'm not sure why Justin Schultz would give up that shot. Let it go right at the tail end of that power play. Get it back towards the net. Two shots for the Oilers on that power play. They are 0 for 2 with four total shots. 7.45 left to go in the second period. Good leaves it there for Mahalik. Mahalik checked by Hall. Marty Ira goes cross ice trying to find Hansel. Hansel checked by Nugent Hopkins who brings it in with Everly. Nugent Hopkins, Paul, and Everly. Everly from the corner. Everly walks out, plays it out in front. Puck still alive. Picked up there by Reeder, but he can't get it out. Back to the point. Ferris will give it to Everly. Everly trying to get by Mahalik. Mahalik lost his stick. And a penalty coming up. Ryan Nugent Hopkins headed to the penalty box. We'll have the penalty kill for the Oilers when we come back. NHL Eastern Conference action tomorrow night on Sportsnet 1. See Steven Stamkos lead the Tampa Bay Lightning into New York to take on former teammate Martin St. Louis and the Rangers. It gets underway at 7 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Mountain, once again on Sportsnet 1. Ryan Nugent Hopkins in the box for hooking. You be the judge. Second power play for the Phoenix Coyotes. They are one for one. Boy Gordon against Antoine Vermette. From the draw. Boy Gordon wins another one, gets it to Mark Payne, and he will send it all the way down onto Devin Dubnik. Randall, Ekman, Larson, Doan, Vermette, and Botcher. Gordon and Hendricks will start this penalty kill along with McKeaton and Payne. Ekman, Larson. To Doan. Doan goes cross ice with a hard pass to Bodker. Miguel Bodker to the middle for Met. Plays it back to Yandel. Yandel. Drop pass for Bodker. Bodker down low. The return feed came from the captain. But the owners get control, and it's Hendricks who sends it down the ice. Yoan Su and Puglia hop over the boards. Andrew Ference along with Jeff Petrie. Shot in by Doan. Scrivens. We'll play it up. Last, last, and the netting. No. I think this is going to be another two-minute penalty. Delay a game to Ben Scrivens. Edmonton penalty to the goaltender. Two minutes of delay a game. So Brad Meyer making the call. He was in good position. Brad Meyer was down low. He's on the opposite side of Ben Scrivens. And ben, that puck just kind of sat up on him. Paddles it up, and <laughs> the universal sign now for delay of game is pointing up to the sky. So five on three for the next minute and five seconds. Rather a critical moment, wouldn't you say? With 6.16 left to go in the second period. And a big face-off win for Boyd Gordon. Chases Yandel back into his own zone. Gordon, Petrie, and Ferentz. Sam Gagne, his pass intended for Bacher, gets by him, Ferris. 
Hammers it down the ice. 43 seconds left to go with a five on three. Gagne has it go off his skates, and he didn't touch it. And that one's coming back, so the Arizona power play is not starting well. The Oilers have had a lot to do with that, namely Boyd Gordon. And when it, I'm sorry, partner, when it is going well, that's one of the reasons why Keith Gandle, number one in the NHL in defenseman power play points, tied with Batman and Shattenkirk in St. Louis. And boy, I tell you, you're talking about some good young defensemen. Look at the list right there. Gordon wins another draw. Gandle. To Doan. Doan, a pass for Gagne. Sam Gagne against Mark Payne played it back, but it was picked off by Gordon. And Gordon sends it down the ice. <laughs> Shane Doan not happy. Slammed his stick in the boards. Hendricks on the giveaway. And Dubnik had to be sharp. Iraq across the line. Two seconds left to go in the penalty to Nugent Hopkins. He's out of the penalty box. Five on four now. Gandel. Hansel couldn't get the shot. Nugent Hopkins starts back. Nugent Hopkins driving in against Stone. His shot goes wide. Good idea by Nugent Hopkins. Cut one way, shoot the puck back the other. Hard to save for the goalie, but couldn't dial it in on the net. Korpakoski brings it in. Korpakoski is checked by Nugent Hopkins. Hansel behind the net. The Keaton battles with him. 27 seconds left to go in the delay on game penalty being served by Jesse Owensu. Orders killing time behind the net. Petrick freezing the puck, and now Nugent Hopkins will pick it up. Nugent Hopkins starts away with Ben Puglia. Benoit Puglia and Nugent Hopkins will go to the bench. And the folks here at Rexall Place appreciate the quick penalty killing the Orders have just turned in. Here's Bodker though. Bodker circles out in front for Bennett. Stop. Penalty is over. Yoans who's back on the ice. Away comes Taylor Hall. Trying to beat Shane Doan. Hall drop pass for Schultz. Schultz back to Hall. Let's it go. And another block turned in by the Coyotes this time by Stone. Perron. With Arcabello and Hall. David Perron to Hall. Hall settles it down. Hall cross ice pass. Stopped again by Stone. Bodker works it out to the red line. He will backhand it in. Shane Doan giving chase against Schultz. Look at the hot back foot. And Schultz went down hard into the end boards and is just getting up slowly as Doan took him down. And Shane Doan is headed to the penalty box. Ben Scrivens keeps it a 1-0 game. When we come back, the Oilers will have the power play. Well, Shane Doan in the penalty box, a chance for the Edmonton Oilers to even up this game. But prior to the game, it was an opportunity to honor Edmonton Oilers netminder Ben Scrivens. Uh, Scrivens was selected the Molson Cup segment winner for last month. And as a result, a donation will be made in Ben's name for $1,000 to the Edmonton Oilers Community Foundation in support of Ben Scrivens' charity of choice. And the charity of choice is the Schizophrenia Society. The owners with their third chance on the man advantage. They have generated four shots in two power plays. Hall with it now. Hall lets a shot go. And Vitaly got his stick in the way and sent that up into the netting. <laughs> he has been a thorn in the side of Taylor Hall on these power plays. He has. It's a terrific effort. Get out. Just slide as much as you can. McMillan was over there. Joe Vitaly just gives an outstanding effort on that. Boy Gordon against Vitaly in the faceoff circle. Gordon wins it. Nugent Hopkins. Here's a shot by Schultz. And again, a block this time turned in by McMillan. McCauley on the corner against Gordon. Everly trying to get that puck free and back to the point. But instead, it is the Coyotes who get it down the ice. Three minutes, 15 seconds left to go in the second period. The owners with 24 shots, the Coyotes with 16. And Schultz dumps it in, couldn't get it by Hansel. The puck ping pongs around though. Brandon Gordley can't get it out by Taylor Hall. Stripped some of the puck, but it is Nugent Hopkins who carries on. Nugent Hopkins back to the point. Schultz waiting for it there. Schultz to Nugent Hopkins. Down low for Hall. Pouliot battling in front. As Schultz moves to the middle, gives it to Hall. Hall walks in. Taylor Hall, truck pass for Schultz. Schultz with a wrist shot through traffic. Side of the net. And it's set down the ice by Tobias Reeder. Both teams want to change up. 
under a minute to go in the penalty for the captain, Shane Doan. Schultz leads the charge. A pass intended for Dreisaitl, too far for him. Dreisaitl recovers, gets it back to Perron, who gets it back to Jakobov at the point. Perron, down low for Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl will play it to Danny Bursa. Bursa, back up top, McKeaton steps into a shot. Pad saved by Devin Dutner. And Burbank sends it the length of the ice. They're doing the right things. Doing the right things on the power play. Getting it back to the point, shooting it. But you have to give the Arizona Coyotes credit. First of all, their goaltending has been very good, but they do a nice job moving as a unit on that penalty kill. Dreisaitl, back to the point. Purcell waiting for it. He'll give it to Nikitin. He'll stop a pass that was blocked by Connor Murphy and then sent down the ice by McMillan. And that may be what you have to start doing. Start shooting off the net, maybe a little shot passes, have guys, yeah, one guy in front of the net, but then slide off to the side if you're the off winger. The orders 0 for 3 now with a man advantage. Botker moving in with Gagne. Botker snaps the shot, and this time it goes off Nikitin and out of play. Introducing the new BF Goodrich KO2 tire. BF Goodrich, take control. Defensive zone faceoff. That means one guy comes out to take the draw. He'll be up against Sam Gagne, and Gordon wins it. Back to Petrie, quickly up for Yoensu. Yes, see Yoensu for the red line. Gets by Ekman Larson, but Hendricks was ahead of the play. Yoensu have a discussion with the linesman on that one. When you watch the Phoenix Coyotes penalty kill, they move four men together. It's not one guy here, then one guy. It's four guys moving, cutting off the ice. You see Yoensu going in offside. And I love the expression. I love that little bit of heat. But the penalty kill for the Coyotes also demands courage to get in front of all those shots that the orders are taking. When you look at this penalty kill, you wonder how they could be ranked 25th in the league. Three on two coming up. Botker waits, then snaps a shot, and Ben Scrivens has the glove hand answer. Sometimes, though, when your goaltending struggles early, that your power, your penalty kill percentage stops because that's that old saying in the National Hockey League, your goaltender's got to be your best penalty killer. We saw Ben Scrivens on the five on three make that huge save at the end as he makes another one with the glove out on the edge of the crease, snaps it with the leather. Well, Mike Smith is the other goaltender for the Coyotes, and he has struggled. Yes. Nobody has lost more games this year than Mike Smith at number, that number is nine. He's four, nine, and oh. Might be a little bit of a look at why the penalty kill percentage puts them at 25th in the league. Armada against Gordon. Gordon wins it again to Petrie, back to Ferris. For under a minute to go in this second period, as Matt Hendricks has Jeff Petrie joining the rush. Hendricks cutting for the net around Yandel. Centers it out in front. And off the end of the stick of Yoensu. Yes, the Yoensu. Too far for Hendricks. Hendricks still hustles and catches up to it. Yoensu from the corner. Yoensu. Big body hangs on. Gets it to Gordon. Gordon cycles with Hendricks. Hendricks throws it towards the net and into the glove. Of Devin Dubnik, Yoensu looking for a rebound that didn't materialize. You know, when the guys in the studio and look at the lineup, Billy Jaffe mentioned that that boy Gordon Lyons is going to go out and do what they do. <laughs> That's pretty much a perfect explanation of Jesse Owen, Sue, Matt Hendricks, and boy Gordon. They go out and they do what they do because they know what they do works. They're experienced NHL guys. They know that if they go work a certain way, that they can start swinging the momentum back their way. Everly Hall and Nugent Hopkins will follow up with 32.4 seconds left to go in the period. Fain and Nikita on the blue line as Hansel lines up against Nugent Hopkins. A scramble draw controlled by the Coyotes. McCullough gets it to puck out the center. Everly quickly gets it to Fain who will rip it in. Dubnik starts it himself. He will play it off the glass. Can't get it by Nikita, but Reader can as he delivers to Hansel. Martin Hansel throws it out in front. Reader is there. Scrivens covers and gets the whistle. Nikita Nikita just decided, you know what? I got to go with Tobias Reader. And Tobias Reader, it was interesting talking to Dave Tippett today about Tobias Reader. And Dave didn't want to make the comparison, but he did. He compared him and said, how, he kept talking about how smart of a hockey player Reader is. But he said, 
I don't want to make this comparison, but I, but it, I will. Yuri Lettman. He's like Yuri Lettman. Now that's high praise because Dave coached Yuri Lettman in Dallas, one of the smarter hockey players you'll ever see on both sides of the puck. Well, they are trying to find someone to take the spot. Ravine Verbata on that line with Mark Mendel, who played together with Verbata for so long. They were almost like, like twins, Vancouver style. And now he's playing with the twins. Yeah. Who doesn't want to do that? And they'll be here on Wednesday. But right now, the Oilers have a period to try and solve Devin Dubnik. After two periods, the score remains 1-0. 25 shots fired the way of the former Oilers goalie did. Uh, well, welcome back. The score after one is the score after two periods of play between the Edmonton Oilers and the Arizona Coyotes. The Oilers, meanwhile, are back in action Wednesday night as uh, they host Vancouver in their fourth meeting of the young season with the Canucks. It's all part of Scotiabank Wednesday night hockey getting underway at 5.30 p.m. Mountain, 4.30 p.m. Pacific on sports there. And while we have the opportunity, we forgot to mention as I'm uh, upstairs and uh, joined by Louis DeBrus. Mark Spector's not here. He said he was too cold after going to the football game, I think. His pinkies were cold, I think. No, it was Mark. a little chilly out there. Yeah, no yeah. Pressure. Big game, though. Yeah, congratulations to, to the Eskimos and the Riders for getting that far without the quarterback, Darian Durant. Okay, let's switch to hockey, and the Oilers looking for a quarterback on the power play. Justin Schultz sometimes, Nikita Nikita. What do you think of his game upon return from the road trip? I like it. And you know, the thing about Nikita is he has that big bomb from the blue line, and everybody knows it. It's just a matter of getting it away. And for him tonight, he's done that. He's gotten a couple real good shots on the power play that have gotten through, and he can crush it. And as you heard the guys in the panel talk about, not a good enough job of getting bodies in front. Purcell's there, get in front of the goaltender. He's 6'6", six, six, he can't see a shot. Can't stop a shot that he can't see, but I like the fact that the Keaton has been blasting away. And here's the big block shot. This one stung. Now he was caught out there for a while, but I like that he's paying the price. He's had a couple tough games here for Edmonton in the last little while. There was some question of whether or not he should be out of the lineup, but he's paying the price. He's getting some shots through. You like to see a guy have a rebound game like this that he's having tonight. All right, if I'm watching this game or maybe find out that the owners are down one nothing, I, I might be wondering about what they're doing in front of the opposing team's net. Uh, the score doesn't suggest it, but you like what Edmonton is doing in front of Dubnik most of the time. Well, especially five on five. Yeah. Not necessarily in the power play. We saw a couple opportunities there where they could have had more presence, but I do like the way Edmonton is funneling bodies to the net. And with that comes good shots to the blue line. That's a little wrister from Justin Schultz. It's not a hard one. Here's another one here. That was on the power play and a good second opportunity by Yakupov. But you know what? I like the fact, look at the bodies getting to the front, getting in front of Devin Dubnik. Give Devin Dubnik credit. People here in Edmonton know him. He's had some great games in an Edmonton uniform. He's made some huge saves. But if the Oilers continue to get bodies there, I think it'll pay off. And they're hoping that'll be the case, Kevin and Drew. All right, thanks very much, guys. The Oilers looking for some firsts. Their first win against the Western Conference team. Their first win against a Pacific Division foe. And their first win when trailing after 40 minutes. The Arizona Coyotes are 3-0 when they have the lead through two periods as the third period gets underway. Tonight's scoring summaries are brought to you by Worley Parsons Ford. Visit WorleyParsonsFord.com to find your place on our construction team. First period, Brandon Gormley was first NHL goal, power play blast. In the second period, check out the face-offs, 58% for the Edmonton Oilers. And the big key there, Kevin? It was Boyd Gordon who won 15 of 17 draws he took. That one goes right out of play. Taylor Hall, meantime, 13 minutes and one second through 40 minutes. He had one shot, three attempts, and one miss. Now, what have you thought about Taylor Hall's game so far as the concern is for the puck went into the crowd? I think Taylor Hall is is giving you what he's got he's he's not had a lot of room to work with as john and billy talked about in the first period the key for taylor hall is just to keep building on each and every shift and keep trying to maybe push a little bit harder see if he can find that space six games missed the owners two three and one without two in the lineup now, there's always that difference drew between you know, you're skating on your own, you're keeping fit. Yep. We know he's a fit guy, but then getting into a game situation. And two weeks is not a long time, but it's a long time to not be at that NHL speed. I actually think that when I look at Taylor's game, he 
Dallas Aikens talked about it. Was, he was, wasn't going to ease him in, and he hasn't eased him into the game. He's given him those important shifts. Pouliot is on that Nugent Hopkins line with Everly right now, and Pouliot giving chase. McCulloch gets there first, sends it around the boards. Erat stepped up on by Nikitin. McCulloch. Ekman Larson tipped to the middle for Martin Erat. Erat is stopped by Nikitin. And this is Nikitin, and he just outreached Big Martin Hansel, Murphy pinching against Juliot. Block ends up in the corner. Hansel is there, but Nikitin pushes it to Mark Fain. Fain to Everly gets the puck back again. The order's making changes. Hall on the ice. Off his stick comes right to Devin Dubnik. And he will play it behind for Murphy. Round for Botker. Botker. The handle up the middle for Vermet. Vermet overskates it, and it's offside. Here are the lefty ticket numbers besides Kid Pack Rock. Your first winning number seven seven two two four nine. And Antoine for Matt centering Michael Bacher, Lori Korpakoski. It's another one of those guys that you know you don't you, know, you think about centermen in the National Hockey League. We all start you know there's Taves, there's Nugent Hopkins, there's Thornton, there's Getzlaff, but Antoine Vermette as a number one center, he gives you everything he's got every shift. And that's that's a Dave Tippett centerman right there. Winning almost. 54% of his draws coming into this one in his 11th year in the National Hockey League. Taylor Hall with Arcabello. Chips and chases. There is Antoine Vermette to get there ahead of Hall. Gordon Lee gives him a hand, gets it up for Korpakoski. Korpakoski runs into Petrie. Petrie keeps it in for David Perron. Perron trying to get free from Gordon Both guys go down. Perron just getting up now has the puck. David Perron, sharp angle shot, blocked by Gormley. Vermette picks it up. He'll outlet it, and it's picked up by Botker to Stone. Stone, wrist shot, right on, big rebound. Botker reaches for it, gets it to Reeder. Tobias Reeder behind the net for Sam Gagne. Gagne from the corner. Gagne still has it, got knocked down there by Petrie. Hall sends it slowly down the ice as the Oilers want to make a change, but Hall's going to have to stay out there because it's an icing call against the Oilers. Sam Gagne, Devin Dubnik, first time back in Edmonton at Rexall Place with their new team. Devin Dubnik, see his numbers, Sam Gagne, just a terrific player. It's a terrific player. He will play his 500th game on Tuesday against Washington. And, and Dave Tippett, we talked about it. Dave Tippett talking about it takes a bit of time. It's a transitional period when you're within one organization for a long time. It takes you a little bit to find your legs, find some traction with the new team. you got to think it helps that he plays with Shane Doan as well. Yeah, I would think so. Two assists in that game, one setting up the captain. Boy Gordon goes down, Gagne on top of him. Boy Gordon. Boy, he just does not have easy shifts. No. He doesn't. Schultz off the board to center. Yandel shoots it right back in for Doan. Doan moving in with Gagne. Doan to Gagne. Hit the side of the net. Gagne again centers it out in front. Yuansu picks it off, and he starts away with Hendricks. To the middle it goes. Keith Foley will pick it up as Gagne moves slowly back to the bench. Sam Gagne hurt when he went down behind the order bench, or behind the net, Gagne on the bench, Dolan shot his block. Fain works at the center to the middle for Dreisaitl, he'll backhand it in. McCall. The Coyotes already without Rob Klinkhammer. And the Tommy brings it in, but McMillan is offside. Sam Gagne, I think might, might have been just winded. As he goes down hard here, goes behind the net, takes a hard hit, and then just kind of got pushed up against the glass and then went right down on his back. And the athletic therapist was trying to lift him up and get him to, to stand up because like a straw, your body's like a straw. If you bend it, you're not going to get any air in there, so you want the guy to stand up and get some air in. He is staying on the bench. Gordon. On the far side against Yakupov. Gets it in for Vitaly. Nice pass to Brandon McMillan. Stopped by 
Scrivens. Here's Cornley. Another shot steered aside by Ben Scrivens. A good start for the Arizona Coyotes. Kelly behind the net with McMillan. And from Bean, puck side of the net. Scramble. Whistle goes. No goal. And all kinds of traffic in front of Ben Scrivens, and he got caught up in that scrum. A really good third period start for the Coyotes. They've been getting pucks deep. They've been going to work. Talk about no easy shifts. There hasn't been any for the Coyotes in this third period. Just going to the net, jam the net, bodies there. Whistle clearly had gone, but the jam at the net, go to the net, keep poking it up. Oof. That's supposed to be in a good goal. Shots are 25-21 now in favor of the Oilers who outshot Arizona 15-8 in the first period and 10-8 in the second. Purcell to Hendricks. Hendricks on the move. Matt Hendricks. We have seen this before where Jesse Owensu replaced by Teddy Purcell on that fourth line. And it's happening right now. The Keaton, good job to keep it in. Gets it to Purcell. Purcell for Hendricks. Hendricks checked by Erat. McCulloch moves the puck ahead to Hunzel. Hunzel plays it to the middle. Ekman Larson to Rieger. Rieger tied up there by McKeon. They both end up going down. Hendricks bounces it off the boys and gets it up the center. Coyote's trying to take advantage of that line change. Erat, long shot, rebound! Hansel put it just wide. McKeon put it down. Martin Hansel. Person with Petrie joining the play. Person across the line against Korpakoski. Julia takes a three for Nugent Hopkins. Nugent Hopkins comes out of the corner. Under pressure for Connor. Look at him drive the net. Nugent Hopkins gets stopped. The puck sits there. Still alive. Trying to freeze it is Devin Dubnik. And he finally does. Here to cheer or just for the beer? Half off wings during the game and game day drink specials every time Edmonton plays all day long. Hudson's Canada's Pub. Shop at Safeway today and you could be our next lucky winner. Watch future Sportsnet telecast. You could win an all-inclusive trip for two to a Grand Bahia Principe Resort, courtesy of redtag.ca, where Canada shops for great travel deals. Brian Nugent Hopkins turns back, takes what the opposition gives, which is a short, small lane to the net, but he tries it anyway, and that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to find a way to manufacture a goal, so you're going to have to drive to the net. Schultz, what a shot. Doesn't make it through. Vermette picks it up. Antoine Vermette battles his way to center against Arcabello. Dumps that puck in. Doan giving chase. Oh, he cuts him off. Schultz. Nice pass for Hall. Right through the middle for David Perron. Perron against Brandon Gorman. Hall reaches in. Oli pinches. But Doan able to work that puck out to center. Schultz right back in. Offside is the call. Well, be interesting to find out after. So, what Taylor Hall thinks about his man. I'm sure he's going to be critical of himself. But when you watch Taylor Hall, you haven't noticed him as much as you would normally from a positive side. But you also haven't noticed him from a negative side. He's not a step behind. He's right there. That goes to that fitness that Gene was talking about, that he's a very, very fit young man, so he's right up the park. McMillan, Vitali and Trombeen, the forward line for the Coyotes. As Ferentz brings it in, gets dumped by Trombeen. Puck comes out to center, Nugent Hopkins gathers it up, he'll give it to Petrie. Jeff Petrie. Louis talked about how smoothly Petrie skates, but he's stripped to the puck there by Joe Vitali. Vitali. Then lost it as Ferentz came back to help out number two. Ferentz. Up for Benoit Pouliot. Turns in his own zone. Pouliot, nice move to get around Reader. Delivers for Everly. Spin move. Fain waiting for it. He was ready to pull the trigger. He was, wasn't he? He had that, had that stick back. He was just looking for it. McCulloch will drop it back to his D partner, Oliver Ekman Larson. It is Paul Perron and Arcabello up front now. 13-35 left to go in regulation time. Hansel tips it ahead for Erat. Too far for him. McKeaton gathers it up. McKeaton past the hall. Pushed to the middle for Arcabello. Off the end of his stick. Ekman Larson. Erat. Here's Reeder. Reeder with Hansel driving the net. Tobias Reeder with a backhand. Stop. 
Chirac back to the point. Gormley goes cross ice. There's a shot by Stone. Spriggan's the save. 22 shots now for the Arizona Coyotes. Hansel on the doorstep. He's denied by Scrivens. Scrivens under the net. Scramble. Gormley with a shot. That is stopped. Arcabello flips it ahead, and there is Gormley to knock down that pass. But in behind the play, it was knocked down by Gormley's hide stick. We'll be back to Rexall right after this. Well, in Edmonton's game versus Ottawa, Keith Ollie certainly helped spark the Edmonton Oilers in their comeback to get a point versus the Senators, and he did that by getting involved in a couple of fights, and not an easy night taking on Chris Neal. Along with the punches, there's the jersey pulling on the back, and then it's Eric Graba. More punches, and as well, the jersey pulling on the back of his neck. And as that, yeah, yeah, that's the result, the jersey burn. Uh, initially, Ollie said it felt more like a sunburn, but a couple of days later it got worse. He says it is the worst he's ever had after that many fights. 19 minutes in penalties for Keith Olley through five games. His third fight was that one against Ryba. And he has had that impact, and you saw it, as Gene mentioned, in the game against Ottawa. And he and Eric Ryba know each other. They have both from Saskatoon. They both spend time together, and they... Uh, I asked both of them after the game, and they both said, hey, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> you fight a friend, you're going to fight a friend. What the Oilers have got to do is find a way to beat a former friend and a former teammate in Devin Dubnik. Hall with it now. Hall off the boards for Eberle. He gets pushed down by Hansel. Only outlet pass for Hall. Hall moving in. Hall, wrist shot, and that one goes wide. Arcabello able to keep it in. Hall behind the net. Drops it for Yakupov. Gets it back again. Hall swings through. Wait by Mark Arcabello. Terrence will give it back to Arcabello. Arcabello throws it towards the net. Blocked by Doan. Yakupov picks it up. Out in front. Trying to get to it as Yakupov drops it back. Good play by Ferentz to take it away. Keep it in. Gagne, good news that he is back on the ice. He's going to have to stay out there as it's an icing call against the Coyotes. Calling Oil Country Classrooms. Get active to win great prizes, Anybody? including a trip to see the Oilers okay. at Rexall Place. For more information and to register, go to edmontonoilers.com slash energize oil country. Louis DeBrus talked about it. Bodies in front. The Oilers trying to get bodies in front, but watch for the white jerseys. Yakupov goes to the net. One, two, three, four, five white jerseys in front of Devin Dubnik. It is so hard to find any little sliver of space to get a good chance on that. Dubnik to Gordley to Gagne. Gagne. Korpakoski with Dolan. Chips it in. Petrie will give chase. Petrie quickly to Ferris. Up the middle it goes. David Perron picks it up. Perron, Arcabello, and Yakupov. Arcabello going wide on Ekman Larson. Gets knocked down. Gagne picks it up, and Gagne uses the glass and sends that puck down the ice, and the Coyotes and the owners will both get changes in. With just over 11 minutes left to go in regulation time. 26-23 now, the shot's starting to tighten up here at Rexall. Fane shoots it in, Dubnik lets it go, Pouliot gets it back, but gets the puck to Dreisaitl. Leon Dreisaitl from the corner. Back to the point, I keep waiting for it there, he'll give it to Fane with a wrist shot through traffic. Purcell looking for the rebound, they're one and one. Teddy Purcell there, but not there. Not in front, gotta be in the eyes. It's just, at, at this point, you've gotta understand, I gotta be in the eyes, not the side that's going. Look, Teddy looking for a deflection. But if you, you know, Ryan Smith used to be one of the best in the world at it, he'd get in front of the goaltender, face the shot, and then be able to knock the puck down as well. Paul Eberle, Nugent Hopkins. Back together with 10.41 left to go in regulation time from the faceoff. It comes back to Schultz. He is with Oli. Keith Oli with the puck now. Eberle from the corner. Jordan Eberle cross ice and again sticks in the way for the Phoenix Coyotes and a puck ends up as a souvenir. Jordan Eberle looking for a shooting lane. Doesn't have it so he's going to try to go cross ice but Good defensive teams get sticks in passing lanes. And right there, Antoine Vermette, we talked about him earlier. Nice extension, just gets the stick in the shoot in the passing lane. Goes up the stance. Joe Vitale against Nugent Hopkins. 
Offensive zone draw, won by Nugent Hopkins. Back to Schultz. The Keaton, the shot right on. Dubnik makes the save. And Brandon McMillan stick breaks. And the Oilers get a break here as Hall goes down low for Nugent Hopkins. Everly. Nugent Hopkins comes out of the corner, surrounded by white shirts. Everly looks for Hall. Tied up there, McCulloch sends it around the boards. And that puck goes up and touches the net. The game review is brought to you by The Brick, saving you more on furniture, mattresses, appliances, and big screen TVs. Taylor Hall back in his first game since crashing into the post against the Vancouver Canucks. He's played decently. Brandon Gorman with his first NHL goal. It was a power play goal, and it was a rocket. And Boyd Gordon continues his dominance in the face-off circle. That is six games in a row where he's 50% or better. Tonight, he's way above that average. Came in eighth best in the league. That probably will go up. Hansel, third best, wins the draw there against Mark Marcabello. Hansel back into his own zone, gives it to Brandon Gorman. Gorman off the boards and gets it out to center. Stone fires that puck in. Clean waiting for it. Hansel on the intercept. Martin Hansel with the rat. Marcabello takes it away, gives it to Perron. Perron to Yakubov. Out of his reach, Dubnik's going to come out and play it. Perron with it. Tried to get that puck on net. A bouncer picked up by Stone. This is Martin Erath. Erath, the pass to Tobias Reeder. Here to side by Scriven. Under 10 minutes left to go in regulation time now. The second of five meetings. They will hook up again here at Rexall on December the 1st. The owners have struggled against the Desert Dogs here at Rexall. They haven't won since 2009. Personal to Dreisaitl. He's with Pouliot. Pouliot off the end of his stick. Pouliot stays with it. Edouard Pouliot laid it back. Personal thought it was going to be Petrie. Petrie thought it was going to be Personal. I got it. You take it. <laughs> Petrie's got it now. Dumps that puck in. Personal trying to race and negate the icing, but can't do it. You're watching Rogers Orders Hockey right here on Sports. Tonight's outstanding play is brought to you by Remax. Outstanding agents, outstanding results. Outstanding courage as well in our Remax outstanding play. Nikita Nikita down to block the shot. Knows it's going to sting, does it anyway. Anyway, and then the Arizona Coyotes take over. They are blocking shots on the penalty kill. They are blocking shots five on five. Their forwards are blocking shots. Their defensemen are blocking shots. It doesn't matter who they're getting in a shooting lane. So we're showing some outstanding shot blocking. Some guys want to play some courageous hockey. They've got to do it now in the NHL. Coaches demand it. A big reason that one goal is all we have seen so far. It came at 14.08 of the first period. It was Brandon Gormley on the power play. 28 shots for the Oilers, 23 for the Coyotes. Nugent Hopkins, Hall, and Everly together. Drew, I'm suspecting for the rest of this hockey game. I think you are correct, sir. Hallman battles to get that away from Iraq. Gives it to Schultz. Schultz flips it down the ice. Hall will give chase. Icing negated. McCall gave it away. Almost to Hall. Got it back again, fired along the boards, and it comes out to center. Tobias Reeder, quick on to Schultz. Schultz, pass defended by Reeder, comes back into the Coyote zone. McCullough lays it off the boards, and down into Oiler territory. Oh, lays it for Schultz. Schultz, lost it to Erat. Marty Erat, back up top, quick shot there by Korpakowski. Hall deflected that into the corner. Hall on the near side now. Gathers it up. Gives it to Allen. He'll flip it out to center. Both teams want to change. Yandel. Dumps it in. Nikita to Fane. The deal with Korpakoski was right there. Arcabello can't get started. Korpakoski. Vermette. Quick shot. Quick goal. Mikkel Bakker. 
makes it a 2-0 game. It's an unfortunate break for the Edmonton Oilers. It's a shot that is blocked and goes off the stick right to Parker. Puck doesn't get out of the zone. That's the number one problem. If the puck doesn't get out of the zone, it's going to come back in your net without a doubt. Or at your net. So that's a puck that goes off the stick and Nikita Nikita doing the right thing. Get your stick in the passing lane, but it goes right to Bodker. Nobody's got a chance to react and settle it in, in time. And Ben Scrivens gets beat on the blocker's side. Bodker now the leading goal getter on this Coyote team. And he's got seven goals. Four of them have come against the Edmonton Oilers. Patrick, oh, here comes the Vitaly got spun around by Andrew Ferris. Vitaly's going to get the penalty, I think. Time 12 minutes, 51 Elbow. Follow Sportsnet on Twitter for real-time scores and highlight video updates from around the league. Every game, every night at Sportsnet, the new home of the NHL. Vitaly <laughs> in the penalty box for Elbowing. He's the uh, club DJ, by the way. Great selection of music, and he comes in and just gets the elbow just underneath the shoulder. Yeah, just underneath the shoulder of Andrew Ferentz gets called on it. Walked in the dressing room today. Vitaly had on Hall and Oates. Yeah. And I said, you don't hear much Hall and Oates. He goes, oh, yeah, we had ABBA on this morning, Motown yesterday, and then the Rolling Stones followed. You can't not like a guy like that. Goodman makes the save on a shot that Taylor Hall did not get all of. This is the order's fourth power play. And it comes with 6.49 left to go. And Taylor Hall would maybe like that one back. Yeah, and that's the second time he's had that one-time opportunity that he hasn't gotten everything he wants on that shot. Huge opportunity now for the Edmonton Oilers. Boy, Gordon wins another draw. Nugent Hopkins to Hall. This one a harder shot, but it didn't make it through. McCullough can't get it by Hall. Nugent Hopkins brings it in. Boyd Gordon out in front. Everly, the pass from Nugent Hopkins went off his skate. Everly plays it back to the point. Schultz with wrist shot through traffic. That puck goes straight up in the air. Everly gathers it up. Hall sees it go by him. No problem. Nugent Hopkins is there. Nugent Hopkins on the half wall. Plays it back to the point. Schultz. Gives it back to Nugent Hopkins, walks in, Hall, side of the net, his shot is stopped. Tried to center it for Everly. Everly gathers it up, gets it to Schultz. Schultz with a wrist shot, that one high and wide. McCall, under pressure from Hall, gets knocked down. Boyd Gordon works the puck to Nugent Hopkins. He'll get it back to Schultz at the point. Schultz, now to Everly. Jordan Everly, walking in, here's Jordan Everly trying to center. Still has it, Everly feeds it out in front. Opportunity for Hall, he scores! Welcome back, Taylor Hall! Power play goal makes it a 2-1 game. This is how smart Taylor Hall is. Sometimes you've got to go away from the bodies. I know I've been saying get to the front of net, get to the front of net, but Taylor Hall goes away from everybody. As everybody goes to the net with a jam play, Taylor Hall reads, where can I go, where can I find the puck? He's gonna circle out high, circle out high, create some space, take some extra time, and find the right spot. Bodies at the net, one, two, three, four, five bodies at the net. Taylor Hall is just a little bit back, and that allows him to find the puck, and the space, and the shot. A belated birthday present he gives to himself. He turned 23 on Friday. His seventh goal of the season makes it 2-1. 14-10, the time of the goal. Shane Doan checked by the Keaton. Jordan Everly on a four-game point streak. Justin Schultz gets the other assist. He's got four points in his last seven games, and the orders are back within one. Their first power play goal against Arizona in the season series so far. Penalty coming up right there. Benoit Pouliot. Pouliot, as Gormley is still getting to his feet. And Benoit Pouliot is going to go to the box. And the Oilers will have to kill off a big penalty. Taylor Hall comes back, gets his team within one.
Okay, is it me? Let's see. Benoit Pouliot, Brandon Gormley. Brandon Gormley still hurting. This is a tough one for a player because you want to pressure, 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 but you just cannot make that play. You just can't. You have to put the brakes on and find a different way, take a different angle. I understand what Ben was trying to do. Your team's five minutes left. Your team's down by one. You just scored. But that's going to get called. And also, it's a dangerous play for Brandon Gormley, obviously. And he is hurt. Now, the good news is that Gormley is staying on the bench. The bad news for the Orders, it is the fourth power play of this game for the Phoenix Coyotes. And Boyd Gordon called on again against Vermette. Vermette, the wingless draw back to Keith Yandel. Yandel. Ekman Larson. Ekman Larson will get it back to Yandel. Yandel throws it towards the net. Gold was in front of the puck went wide. Vermette. Yours, Henley, Pouliot, Gordon. At 15. Back to the point. Yandel keeps it in. Yandel. Ekman Larson with it now. Ekman Larson. Blocked by Petrie. Petrie. Behind the net for Ferret. Gold on him. Vermette coming in to get the loose puck. Gold gets it to Botker. Back to the point for Yandel. Yandel. Over to Ekman Larson. Big shot blocked by Petrie. A bouncing puck swept back. Here's Yandel with a shot. What a block by Boyd Gordon as Yandel let that one go. Ekman Larson with it now. He'll snap a shot. Petrie with the block this time. Gold gave it away. And Hendricks able to get it out to center. Jeff Petrie and Boyd Gordon selling out to keep it a 2 1 game. Hendricks will backhand it, and he is going to get off as well. 55 seconds left to go in the penalty to Benoit Julia. Yandel hammers that puck in. It just dies for Gagne. He lets the shot go. Scribbles the save off him and straight up. And the glass, I think the glass might have broken over in the corner. The Coyote players complaining they thought that puck went off the netting. Stone fires it in. Hansel leaves it for Iraq who gives it to Gagne. Gagne throws it towards the net and Scrivens makes the save before Hansel can get a stick on it. We have our first winner in our score and win contest tonight on behalf of Safeway and Imperial Margarine. Nicole McCalder of Edmonton has won the toy built single stage snow thrower on the seventh goal of the season for Taylor Hall. His fifth goal here at Rexall. So there's a little confusion. From our angle, it's tough to see um, what they're looking at over at the glass over there. That's the photographer hole. That's what it is. And so when the shot went there, the, the owners were complaining that the puck actually went through the photographer's hole and came back. It should have been blown dead and face off should be outside, but they didn't make an exchange. Scramble draw, Payne with possession. Don't wait on him. Vermette back to the point. Yandel to Stone. Stone throws it towards the net. Deflected by Stone. Two cracks at it. Scrivens covers up and he'll get the whistle. Three seconds left in the penalty kill. It's been good pressure by the Coyotes. They've got men in front, but the Oilers have been desperate in this shorthanded situation. Ben Scrivens Called on to make a couple of key saves. Boyd Gordon directing traffic. He will line up against Joe Vitale from the faceoff. Back to the point. Keeping it in with Stone. The penalty is over. There's the shot from the point. Nugent Hopkins has the puck. Pugliac out of the box. Nugent Hopkins, huge head of steam. Nugent Hopkins got in for the net. Right out in front it comes. Cleared back to the point. Keith Foley keeps it in for the orders. Pugliac, Nugent Hopkins, and Everett. On the near side, Keith Olley pinches, keeps it in, throws it towards the net. And Devin Dubnik makes a glove save, he'll hang on. Brian Nugent Hopkins has been nothing short of impressive, impressive so far this year. And the most impressive thing is his speed. He added weight, but he obviously added weight in the right area. He got stronger and... and NHL is a lot of athletes won't get sports specific stronger. You can tell that Ryan Nugent Hopkins has. With Everly and Hall against Hansel. Hansel wins that draw. And the Coyotes able to get it out and down the ice. Nikit gave it away to Iraq. Marty Iraq 
Hansel right out in front. Reader tipped that just wide. Hall gets knocked down as he gives it to Schultz. Schultz takes a breath. He's got two minutes and 12 seconds on the clock. Schultz to Nikitin. Nikitin to Everly. To Hall. Taylor Hall moving in. Fires a shot. Dubnik reaches for it. Here's Schultz. Oh, how did that not go in? Erat the hero so far. Everly in the corner. Nugent Hopkins behind the net. Nugent Hopkins works it out in front. Trying to find Hall. Scrambling for it. Hall with it now. He'll give it to Nugent Hopkins. Ben Scrivens thinking about coming out. Puck comes back to the point. Scrivens cannot get out of the cage. He'll have to retreat. Both teams make changes. We've got a minute 40 left to go. Bunker intercepts that pass attempt. Arcabello brings it in. Wines fires a shot. Big rebound. The net is empty for the orders. Flip down the ice. Pouliot stops it at center. Six attackers. Pouliot with Purcell. Perron behind the net. He is stopped by Shane Doan. Shane Doan will skate it out himself. Doan flips it to the middle. Cut off there by Arcabello. Back to Ferentz. Ferentz checked by Doan. Doan with an opportunity. Petrie gets there. He'll give it to the captain. Ferentz. Leads the rush, he'll go cross ice. Pouliot brings it in with less than a minute to go. McCulloch rips it around the boards. Purcell does a good job to keep it in for Ferentz. Perron reaching for it. Ekman Larson gets there first. Bodker to the middle it goes. An opportunity with an empty net. And the pass attempt for Vermette from Kropakowski didn't work. Trying to be generous. Vermette with it now. Vermette takes a look. He'll rang some time. We're down to 30 seconds. The orders make a change. Ekman Larson fired that around the boards, but nobody touched it. And the orders have life. 24.4 seconds to go. Now Dallas Aikens will obviously call his timeout now. 24 seconds left. The play of the game is brought to you by Rogers. Live like never before. Our play of the game brings one into the other. The big key, Devin Dudnik slides out, takes a breakaway, and probably empty net goal away from Ryan Nugent Hopkins on the penalty kill on the power play. And then right after that, about 30 seconds later, Brandon Gorman with his first NHL goal. And they have not trailed the Phoenix Coyotes since then. Big play by Devin Dudnik. And a big shot by Brandon Gormley. Mikkel Botker scored at 12.51. Taylor Hall came back at 14.10. And that's where we stand. It was close to being tied up. If you see some wear and tear in the bodies. Puck pops out. Got to put it down the glove. And Marty Erat turns and gets his stick in the right position at the right time. Taking the goal away from Justin Schultz. Justin had to go down. Stop it with his hand. The settle it. Then quickly to the stick. But what a second effort by Marty Erat. The two best face-off men in this hockey game will line up now. A huge drop. Both go down. Ekman Larson plays it high. Can't get it by Schultz. Hansel tried to kick it out. Hall controls, but he'll have to clear the zone. 14 seconds remaining. Martin Hansel racing after it against David Perron. The owners, six attackers, desperate to get up the ice. Hall will not have that opportunity as Devin Dubnik in his first ever regulation game against his old team runs his record now to 4-0-1 as he makes 33 saves and the Coyotes win it by one.